All right, this video will be talking about how the importance of using your controller scope tags versus your program scope tags are in using the Easy PLC's machine simulator. So um, again, when you've seen uh, the last video where we did our bit shift left for this paint mechanism, right, for this paint booth, we can see that we had a problem with the paint counter, which is right here. Now that tag was because, or that problem was because I used a actual uh, program scope tag, which was program scope right here at the uh, program level tag, right? Instead of a, a controller tag. So let me break that down a little bit better. So in order for you to communicate through your OPC topic and to communicate through your OPC topic and translate that data to Easy PLC's machine driver, you're going to have to use program scope tags. Okay. Or not program scope tags, but controller scope tags meaning your higher level pro uh, controller scope tags now controller scope tags are global tags that be can be used anywhere inside of that controller so again when it comes down to it program scope tags are going to be mandated that they are used inside of that specific program now you can actually argue the fact that somebody could come in here and change the controller or the program scope tags from input parameters, output parameters, input output parameters, or actual public uh, parameters. But keep in mind, this only keeps it public so that you can only talk between tasks. You can actually, you're, you can only talk between multiple programs. You can't talk to another task level. Say if we had two different tasks, or you can't communicate out to an OPC topic. Um, so keep in mind, if you're talking through an OPC topic, you need to call that actual program level right so I would have to call that main program and then I would have to call that that tag I was using so in my atmosphere I, what I did is I just made the tag a controller scope tag and in doing so that gave me the clearance to actually talk through my OPC topic all the way to through machine simulators driver and then have it work properly now I do will say that I had to call out the ACC so you would think you would just have to call out this first uh, tag but the cool thing is is it will look at the ACC so I did a dot ACC so uh, let me show you that now, let me come over here and show you my driver real quick so we're gonna go to IO we're gonna open that up uh, to a bigger IO and I'll show you uh, we're gonna actually stop the driver we're gonna come over here to configure okay and you can see it when I added it in I added the paint part our painted parts underscore counter dot ACC now again when it came come down to it right talking through this I had to change that the controllers are from program scope to controller scope so I changed the scope so it's a more global tag it can be used anywhere inside of my OPC topic that I want right and then I went ahead and did the dot ACC now again dot ACC is pointing directly to the count of that counter and if you are curious about that a little bit deeper, that's pointing directly to that count of that, the ACC of that counter, right? So the counter is named paint, painted parts underscore counter, and then it's going to the ACC. So I'm just showing you a different way and a, a, well, the correct way to actually use this with Rockwell software. Um, and again, my driver is going to be as you see. So uh, let's come over here and utilize this. Now let's go ahead and build our driver one more time. So let's come over here. Uh, at we'll add our painted parts down here, right here, and we're going to go ahead and do our stop light. This is our start light. Uh, this is the spray. So this is the spray right here. This is the advance. This is the conveyor on. Okay, so we have all those in there. We have the PE one, PE two the start push button and these are drag and drop real real easy All right and we have our uh, we have our emergency stop so I didn't actually choose to use the pusher advanced uh, input so that's just something I just choose choose not to use um, but when it comes down to it for Rockwell automation uh, I always use the APC underscore driver underscore enhanced now again all I have to do now is start my driver and you can see it automatically pops up and works. Let's go ahead and uh, reset them. Well, let's reset the machine. 
and we're going to reset the machine. What I want to do too is actually throw this. I have a first scan, so it's going to reset my bit shift. So let's actually do that. Let's come over here and issue this to a program level or to a, uh, pro, from a program mode and then change it back to run mode. So what this is going to do is going to clear out all my whole, my whole bit shift registry, right? And that's easily seen by looking at the registry and seeing that it has nothing in it. If you wanted to see how that video worked, again, we're just going to actually load the system right here. Um, now I'm going to come in and start my driver again. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and hit the start push button. So let's view our I.O. We'll hit the start push button. We hit the start push button and then it starts the conveyor. And now the bit, bit shift registry should start working. Now every time a painted part comes through, it's going to count on the counter. And uh, well, let's just go down there and check that out, right? So let's go down there, look at the photo eyes right there. Let's use our arrows to move, navigate. And every time a painted part, or every time a part gets painted, it's going to count. And you see that counting right there. Now, when a uh, this is not going to get painted, obviously, because the bit shift is not shifted. It's shifted a zero into that. The white container will get painted to a yellow color. And then it's going to come down here and get kicked out on the very end. So you see our counter is working, though, right? So that's a, a really good indication, right? We can actually see that, too, through our analog actually is it this is right here the digital display you can see that the digital uh, value right here display value so just wanted to kind of show you how that worked and again how the bit shift works we talked about that in the previous video so we don't really have to talk about that too much in this video but I did want to actually show you that we are using bit 5 uh, to do the spray and we're using bit 15 to do the advanced pusher what do I mean by advanced pusher at the very end down here you can see that this advanced pusher is going to push out all of the yellow uh, bottles. So you see it's going to push out all of the yellow bottles. This pusher is going to come out and click this, hit this yellow bottle. And the blue bottles is going to let continue through to the, uh, the end of the conveyor. So all of the yellow ones, and that's using, again, that's using the bit 15. And uh, the bit to spray it, I'm using bit 5. Uh, that's of that bit shift so counting from all my bits right so it's actually bit 6 and it's bit 16 that we're using but when it comes into it it's it's offset by 1 because we use uh, 0 as an actual counter right so just keep that in mind but the highlight of this video is to use if you're using uh, easy PLC make sure all of your tags are controller scope okay make sure they're all controller scope program scope tags will get you in trouble you'll start wondering why your stuff is not working it is working um, but again sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't you're gonna have your best atmosphere using the controller scope tags using Rockwell automation so please keep that in mind and keep that in mind with all OPCs I would think that would be the case so again I'm not sure hundred percent with Siemens or code sys or nothing like that but again when it comes onto it I would still stick with the top tier tag structure um, meaning uh, controller scope tags Okay, so make sure you do all your tags in controller scope. And again, if you want to actually reference that again, all of my tags are in my controller scope and they are not in my program scope. Okay, unless you're calling your program scope tags, it's completely up to you. But I just want to give you the highlight of how that works and the structure of that so that you don't make the same mistake I've made before. Okay, so with all that said, see you guys on the next one.